Greetings and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many others. Episodes of the podcast also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 820 a.m. across Central Virginia. Please send any questions, comments, or feedback to PCF Podcast at VHHA.com. Again, that's PCF Podcast at VHHA.com. And today we are delighted to have a returning guest with us, our colleague here at VHHA, Julie Dime, who is the Vice President of Government Advocacy. She's joining us during her busy season or on the precipice of her busy season, uh, which is the General Assembly session. She's going to give us the scoop on what is going to happen in the 2021 Virginia General Assembly session. With that, welcome, Julie. Thank you so much, Julianne. I'm glad to be back. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. All right, so let's start with the session. We just set it up. We are recording this on Monday, January the 11th, two days from now, Wednesday, January the 13th. The 2021 Virginia General Assembly session will gavel in. This year is going to be a little bit different because we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, so that's going to lead to some changes in the way that the session would normally occur, but the legislative business is still going to happen. So Julie, since you're our expert, our eyes and ears on the ground, what is going to be unique and different about the way that the legislative business is conducted this year? Sure. Well, thanks, Julian. It is indeed going to be unusual. And certainly we got a little bit of a taste of how this will go during the summer special session being all virtual, or at least for the House of Delegates was virtual. The Senate did come in and and conducted their business from the Science Museum here in Richmond. This year and, and during our normal regular session, the House of Delegates will again be all virtual. They will hold all committee hearings, subcommittee hearings, and session, which they will be going in at four o'clock every day for the duration of the session. We believe the Senate will maintain the noon scheduled time when they will be on the floor session. So a little bit different than that's the first time, at least in my knowledge, that we've had the House and the Senate going into session at different times during the day. So yes, unique is a great way to put it. Like I said, we did manage to get through the special session with this new virtual, new normal side, and we will continue to do that during the regular session. And just to recap that, the start times for the floor sessions are going to be a little bit different. With the House, I believe you said, going at 4 o'clock every afternoon as opposed to the normal noon start time, but the Senate will still be on the noon start time. So it sounds like that's going to be a little bit different. And then in terms of timing, also this year, which is an odd year on the calendar, would normally be a 46-day legislative session, but I gather that that might not be the duration this year. Can you give us some insight about how long in terms of the number of days the legislative session might last this year. Absolutely. That's another great point. And another piece of the uncertainty puzzle, we normally, constitutionally, the General Assembly is bound to a 30-day session. However, with a two-thirds vote, they can extend that session to 46 days, which is, again, far as, as far back as I can remember, which has been almost 20 years that I have been working in some legislative capacity or another, they've always extended to the 46 days. Early on, the Republicans have said that they are not going to vote to extend the session to the 46 days. So we are looking at a 30-day session. However, what we are hearing lately is that we'll have the 30-day session and there will likely be a special session tacked on to the 30-day session to complete the total of 46 days. So I don't think we're getting out of the 46 days. We'll definitely have it, which is going to be a little bit different. We'll have 30 days, and then, a, and then the 16 days will be at the end of that for a total of 46, but just in two separate chunks, I guess you'd say. Okay, so maybe taking a different path to get there, but still potentially That's ending right. up with the same number of days. Thank you for that explanation, Julie. That's right. So looking ahead to the session... We know that, as you mentioned, there was a legislative special session that began in August of 2020 and continued through about December of 2020. A lot of that was focused on updating the budget to respond to the economic downturn that has occurred as a result of the pandemic. I gather that there may still be some budgetary action to be considered during the session, uh, and legislators this year are going to have some caps on the number of bills they can submit to try to put a lid on the action a little bit. But there are still going to be other significant policy issues, particularly on the health care front, as we still find ourselves in the middle of a pandemic. So what are some of the policy items that you're 
you're tracking, Julie, and that you'll be engaging on this session? Sure. Well, you're exactly right about the bill count. This year, they did impose a bill limit in the House. It's seven bills that can be introduced by each member. So that is 100 members and seven bills. And in the Senate, it's 12 bills per senator. So there's 40 senators, and so they can have at most 12 bills. So we are going to see a reduced number of legislation, although in a 30-day or even in a 46-day session, that is a lot of legislation going through the process any way you look at it. As far as what VHJ is focused on, we are focused on a number of budget items. One I will point out is the trauma fund. And this is a fund that was established many years ago to help out the trauma centers that are in Virginia, and they do have a special fund And at the end of the fiscal year, they are allotted a percentage of funding based on the number of trauma patients they've had throughout the year. The amount of money coming into the fund due to a policy change that was significantly reduced. So we are looking to make sure that the trauma fund is held harmless and that it is fully funded for our trauma centers. So I would say that is certainly a number one priority for us. Secondly, we will have, we're pursuing again, the nurse preceptor program where last year during session, the, the regular session, we were able to get approved, but the funding unfortunately was unallotted during the reconvened session due to COVID. So we are trying again to get that funding reallotted for the nurse preceptor program. And I guess lastly, I would say that the ED utilization penalty that was also in the 2020 session, this was imposed on us on the hospitals and the emergency department providers. Uh, For any repeat patients who come to the emergency department, it's it's basically penalizing us for those who who utilize the emergency department. So we are looking at a alternative to what that would look like. We know that there was savings as a result of this new penalty in the budget. So we are looking for, we've got an alternative that we hope not only will save the state money, but actually help the patients that are coming to the emergency department who clearly are, are needing help. If you're coming to the emergency room more than 10 times a year, there is something going on that needs to be addressed. And penalizing our providers and our hospitals is not the right way to go. We actually really need to focus on what is happening with those patients so we can get them in better health. So that is our, I would say, our third top priority for the budget. As far as legislation, um, one of the items that we are working on is a maternal health data and quality measures task force. And this is a task force that will be convened to evaluate state-level data sources from all stakeholders, including our payers and all available electronic claims data, to examine the quality of our demographic and clinical outcome data. So we want to make sure we do know that there are some disparities in the maternal health area, particularly for those in minority communities. And we need to find out, we need to gather all of that data to determine what are some solutions that we can look forward to in evaluating what kind of data we have on the state level, evaluating uh, maternal care, including health care effectiveness data and information set measure updates to prenatal and postpartum care and postpartum depression um, is another one that we want to look at. So we want to make sure that we're getting the continuum of care starting when a mom becomes pregnant through her pregnancy, and then also after she delivers to make sure that we're really understanding what is going on with the birthing person. So that will be carried by Leader Herring. So we're very excited about this opportunity and looking forward to working with Leader Herring on this issue. She will also have a budget amendment, of course, that will go with this proposed legislation. We were told early on Julian, that we, uh, anything that was highly controversial, being that it's such a short session to begin with, the bill limitations, most of my colleagues in the lobbying field were told that if they brought anything highly controversial, the likelihood of it passing was slim to none. So we heeded that warning here at VHHA and wanted to make sure that we were prepared and had the the ability to be very agile in making sure that we were uh, monitoring all legislation to see if it would potentially impact our hospital. So we are focused some, of course, on on offense, but making sure that we are keeping eyes on things that are out there that could be harmful as well. The last thing I do want to say and put on your listeners' radar is the um, legalization of marijuana. This has been a hot topic this year and will continue to be. We are monitoring that. It will continue to be a very hot topic as we go through session. 
Well, it sounds like you and the team have a full plate with uh, lots going on. And even with those bill caps, and I know in a normal session, you see upwards of 3,000 pieces of legislation. It sounds like you could still be looking at a thousand plus pieces of legislation. So plenty to contend with there. And so for obviously you and the team will be actively engaged throughout the session, uh, working with members, working with policymakers, working with staff. For the average Virginian who wants to be able to track what's going on, wants to keep their finger on the pulse, but this year, because of the virtual format, will be unable to attend in person if they are so inclined. What resources would you direct them to or or recommend them to email lists or things like that they can sign up for, like the Hospital Grassroots Network? Uh, Where would you point them so that they can stay informed if they want to track what's going on? Absolutely great question, and we would definitely encourage everyone to stay informed Uh, You can go to the virginiageneralassembly.gov website, and there you will be able to find a schedule of meetings that will be occurring on each day. There's also a link to where you can watch it virtually or listen virtually to each committee meeting and subcommittee meeting. So there's been some great things that have come out of this, and that's one of them, is that now everything is uh, publicized um, online now. So there is certainly a lot more transparency um, has been brought into the to the process. As far as joining our Hospital Grassroots Network, thank you so much for plugging that. You can go to our website, which is the VHHA.com website. There's a link on there that will enable you to sign up for our Grassroots Network. We would certainly encourage you to do that. We will be sending out what we call action alerts throughout the session. So you can engage with us and follow along with what we are uh, what we are watching during the session. It will also uh, sign you up for the advocacy newsletter that we send out once a month uh, with highlights and all kinds of things at, related to advocacy that are going on during session, but also outside of session as well. And for people that want to sign up for the Hospital Grassroots Network, you'll want to visit vhha.com slash advocacy, and there's a link in the menu on that page to sign up for the Hospital Grassroots Network. So please do that to stay up to date and to get those action alerts, because that's when Julie and the team tells you when there are the latest up-to-the-minute events and happenings that are occurring that you can react to and engage with. And uh, Julie, since you are a repeat guest on the podcast, I told you I would spare you from uh, some of the questions that we normally ask our podcast guests. So I'll only throw one little curveball question at you this year. And All that, right. Or, or for this episode, I should say. And that is this. What is one thing, and I'm not asking for a resolution per se, but we are just on the other side of the new year. So what's one thing that you're looking forward to trying to accomplish in 2021? Well, Julian, that's a great question. And, and for your listeners, I'm going to be extraordinarily candid. Um, I need to lose some weight. So <laughs> this, I don't, definitely, hey, don't, I would don't we all, to, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely not one of those that lost weight during the COVID or uh, the continuation of the COVID pandemic. I've definitely added the COVID 20. Um, and that's probably conservative. So <laughs> I need to get, uh, get myself back into shape. Um, and looking forward to some opportunities to be outside. Um, hopefully as we, um, are able to, to get the, ourselves as well as the population vaccinated so we can get outside, travel more, just be outside in general and start exercising more and, and feeling like I want to exercise. So <laughs> that's a very candid answer for you. Well, those are all things uh, to work on and look forward to. And like I said, listen, we are, we're all um, on the weight loss journey at some stage or other, so I can, cer- <laughs> I can certainly relate. Well, listen, Julie, I know that you're busy and have plenty of things to do, so I want to thank you for sparing a few moments of your time and for giving uh, our listeners uh, a little bit of an overview about what to look forward to in the 2021 Virginia General Assembly session. And with that, that's going to bring us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please go to Apple Podcasts podcast and leave us a five-star review. And thank you again to our guest, Julie Dime, Vice President of Government Advocacy for VHHA. Thanks, Julie. Thank you so much, Julian. Appreciate having me.